Hello everyone, welcome to another video on Learn Yoruba Online and I can promise you if you stay to the end of this video you will actually become a very very much better speaker of the Yoruba language. You'll be able to con construct independent sentences on your own. You'll be able to understand a lot of the Yoruba language. But of course, you know, making this boast actually means this video is not simple in one part. But of course, I promise you if you stick to the end you won't understand everything at first watch but as you watch it more and more you will understand a lot part of it you will keep understanding it better and it's actually a systematic video that gives you a system to construct the sentences in the yoruba language and then to help it, to understand the yoruba language so i just use i just say this to encourage you that you are here for a deep lesson in the, of the yoruba language today but you may not understand everything but believe me even if it's just five percent you understand this video it's going to go a long way in helping you to better understand the yoruba language and diving into the video what the video is about is about the system that applies to the yoruba language in constructing sentences how verb phrase turn to noun or noun phrase how verb turns to uh, noun or noun turns to verb you know for example in english we can have dance dance is actually a verb and then we can add ing but dancing it means it is continuous that is you use ing to signify continuous so everything you want to say in the english language in the english language if you had ing you know that that thing is actually continuous so these are some of the principles that i want to introduce to you some principles that work like that in the yoruba language and the first i'll be talking about is prefix don't worry if you don't understand some terminologies i'm a language student that's why i understand some of these terminologies but i will explain them it's just a terminology of describing things not necessarily you no know, complicated as you may think it is for example in english we have suffix we have affix we have infix when talking about suffix suffix is the word is the, is the sound that you had at the end of the word that gives it that gives it another meaning or change the class of that word from either verb to noun or noun to verb for example as i've used ing in english ing is a suffix that's the label and then we have a uh, prefix prefix means it's, it's not hard at the end, it is harded at the beginning. And so I'll be talking to you how prefix is actually being used in the Yoruba language. Prefix is used in Yoruba language mainly to actually show possession. That is, I own this thing. Or And the possession is actually uh, sometimes, it, it, it's actually context, the meaning is context dependent. For example, someone can show possession that, okay, this is the job that this person is doing when you understand it you will know how to define different jobs that people do in the yoruba language that okay they use the prefix to signify the type of job that someone is doing or the type of character that someone has and also a lot of other things so let me just dive into it and then we'll understand more for example in the yoruba language we have pleasure which is a which is a verb phrase that is to key fish and then when we had her to it it becomes akbaja then that person is actually someone who keeps fish and then we also have wako, which means to drive. And then when we have hard to eat, it becomes awako. That turns the person to a driver. That turns the world to a driver. We have worawo, which means to look at the star. And then when we had a, it becomes awurawo. That means a stargazer. So, you see, it's actually turning the, the, the verb phrase into a noun or a noun phrase. And then we also have bala, which means to save. And then when we, uh, we, when we had e, which is i, to the beginning it becomes igbala which means salvation we have kole which means to actually pack debts and then when we had i to it which is e it becomes ikole which actually ikole means packer and then we also have bale bale means to sweep but when we actually pre precede it with e sand it becomes igbale which means a broom bale sweep igbale broom and then going for that we also have aside from this single word which is a and e which is r and e which is a and i we also precede words in the yoruba language with a l which is a l and e l which is a l and then we also proceed words with o l which is o l as well in english and then let me give an example for example in the yoruba language we have adie adie means n adie means hen and then when we now have add a l to it we have Aladie, and when we had a head to it, which is Ali, it becomes Aladie, and the Aladie means someone who sells hen. 
that is what it means someone who says hen someone that's always in possession of n but that is what it does for a living aladi is someone who says hen and then in the con there are some contests that actually come that as i've said earlier are uh, the, the context will define the meaning but the what it really means is that you are actually you possess that thing either as a job or as a character or whatever it is but the context will give it a wider meaning for example i said aladie aladie can just mean the person who owns the chicken or in the context of another usage it may mean somebody who is selling chicken so the context will give it the deeper meaning the actual meaning and then we also have adbi adbi means to beg and then we we had al which is ali it becomes aladbe aladbe and then aladbe means a beggar a beggar so we have albosa albosa is onion and then we had al which is ali and then it becomes alalubosa that is someone who says onion or someone who is in possession of onions and we also have uh, aga 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 and then we had ali and then we have alaga alaga so different words can go like that different verbs in the yoruba language can go like that or different nouns can go like that and but if you had a hell to it it means you are showing possession that the person that uh, this is the this is someone who actually possessed more of this like adie aladie then he actually has is actually in possession of hen or he said hen or aladbi someone who possess you know they possess that thing like is actually a beggar who actually do it consistently who is actually involved in it is used to show possession and then aside from a hell we also have in showing possession we also have o n so let me give a, a more wider example to explain to explain how this work for examples we have indefinite and definite articles in the english language we have the indefinite which is a and han a and han and then we have the definite which is d the so what determines if a word is going to carry a or han is that if a word is starting with a vowel in english we will use han but if it's starting with a consonant we will use a for example an elephant an egg but we use a casket because c is a is a consonant but e is uh, is a vowel so this is the same thing that applies in yoruba language for example i said adie and we say aladie if a word starts with a what you will precede it with to show possession of that word is a hell but if a word starts with i in the yoruba language you will not precede it, you will not precede it you will not prefix it with a l you will prefix it with o n and that will give us for example we have iresi we will have oniresi that is someone who says rice so someone who is in possession of rice we have idiri someone who makes e and then we have onidiri which is an hairdresser and we also have uh ibale we have ibale which means uh, a broom and then we had ohen onidbale which means someone who says broom or someone in possession of brooms and we also have ifa ifa is oracle ifa is oracle and we also have onifa onifa when you say onifa onifa is an oracle priest so that someone who is in possession of if someone who has their that knowledge is always used to show possession in different contexts either that someone possesses a higher knowledge of something someone is an oracle of that thing so it just used to show possession and mostly it is used to show possession in terms of maybe the job that someone does uh, when, when they say okay uh, uh ifa onifa then is an oracle priest bale bale oni bale he says he says broom oni diri Idiri means to plait the hair. Onidiri, someone who plaits the hair. So things like that is used to show uh, the business that someone does or what someone actually possess. You can use it in different contexts. And then let's go ahead. We also have I've explained that okay, if it starts with a, you precede it with a hell, which is a li. If it starts with a, you precede it with a li. If it starts with e, you precede with it. You precede it with o ni. If it starts with e. Then you precede you precede it with a l which is e l so we have erna erna you know I said before adie adie because it starts with a adie means alad adie we, we we say that one as aladie that is someone who says chicken who says hen or someone in possession of hen or the owner of a hen but now we have the same animal another animal of in this you know the animals are in the same class we also we have erna but because this one starts with a 
we will say early we will put early in the beginning to prefix it so we have a learner a learner a learner we cannot say a learner it is a learner because it starts with a so a learner means someone who says goat or so or the owner of the, the owner of the goat or someone who is always in possession of goat or in possession of goat and the likes and we also have a uh, edger edger means fish and then we can say a ledger that is uh, someone who says fish and then we also have m1 m1 means prison m1 means prison that's why i said you know the context we actually give it the exact meaning the context where it's being used so this one uh, uh we have a one prison and then we can now say l1 l1 is a prisoner so this is just how yoruba actually does its thing m1 prison l1 prisoner so and then we also have a which is beans a beans we can we also have l1 l1 means someone who says beans or someone always in possession of beans so that is for that and then we also have uh o hell as well o l and this one is actually used when the word starts with O. When the word starts with O, you precede it with, you precede it with O hell. So we have Onje. Onje means food. And then we have Olonje, that is a food seller. Olonje, or someone who is actually post in possession of the food. For example, you can say, ah, uh, 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 for example, Olonje means someone, the owner of the food. Or someone who sells food. That's Olonje. We also have Ome. Ome is water. Omi is water, and then we also have Olomi, that is someone who says water, or someone who is the owner of the water. Maybe you have a water in your office, you are referenced to ah, who owns the water. You can say, ah, is the one who oh, is the one. So, only, only, Omi, Olomi, Olomi. You can just say it in one word. Maybe point to him, uh, Olomi, you know, stuff like that. And then we also have Oko. Oko in Yoruba means farm. Oko means farm. And we have Oloko, Oloko. Oloko. And then we also have uh, Oro, 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 Oro. You know, when the word starts with O, we precede it with O L. When it starts with E, we precede it with E L, which is E L. And then when it starts with O, Yoruba has two forms of O, O and O, O and O. You know, I'm just using English to say it so that you can understand better. There's no, there's nothing like two form of O. We have O and O. I'm just using English. I'm just using some, some counterparts in the English language to, for better understanding. So we have O in Yoruba. If you start with O, you precede it with O Li. If you start with O, you precede with you precede it with O Li. And then we have Oro. Oro means wealth or riches. And then we can say Oloro, that is a rich man or a wealthy man. We can also have we also have Okpa, Okpa, and then we say Olokpa. Olokpa in Yoruba is a policeman. Uh, but this actually drives back to centuries ago when policemen don't carry gun they only held all the stick that was when police were in uh, were actually introduced into the system when the white men came colonized and then they have some guards and then those people actually only car they only carry sticks like long like long like this they carry stick but they don't have a gun and then they go around with it you know in, in carrying out their official duties and then Yoruba say, oh, Olokpa, that is the one in possession of sticks. The one in possession of stick, that is Olokpa, that they the owner of the stick. And no, since they are the only one that carries it, so that they are, they, that is, that is actually being used to refer to their job. Even to today, they still refer to policemen, to policemen as Olokpa, you know. That's, it has been transferred, you know, since then till now. We still call policeman in Yoruba language as Olokpa, but Olokpa means someone in possession of as the stick. So that's what Olokpa is. That's what we have as Olokpa. And then let me go back a little bit to O as well to just define the usage of this in defining character. Like someone is actually exhibiting a character, but most uh, most times the, the usage of this in describing character is sometimes maybe always most times in the negative form for example we have ibaje in the yoruba language and i've said earlier if it will start with e the preceding uh the prefix will be o n so ibaje in yoruba language means uh ibaje something that is destroyed and an awkward behavior an awkward behavior that's what ibaje is an awkward behavior a, a, a behavior that doesn't go according to moral and then we can say only baje that is someone in possession of that kind of behavior only baje that is what only baje is someone who behaves awkwardly and then we also have a uh, gangan gangan and we 
we can say oni gagan gagan is a drum that talking drum that's gagan and then we can say oni gagan that is someone who beats that drum so prefix in yoruba is mostly used to show possession and these are the different circumstances where you can use them when it starts with with a you precede it with a hell if we start with i you proceed with you proceed it with ohen which is o, uh, only if we start with a you proceed it with a li if we start with o you proceed it with you proceed it with o li if we start with a you prefix which is preceded as well you pre prefix it with a li and if you start with o you proceed you pre uh, prefix it with o li so that is for that and of course Okay, so let me just go to some of the because I used few examples at the beginning. Some of you might be confused. For example, I said if Bala carries E, it becomes Ibala. Save Ibala means save, Ibala means salvation. And then you know, because it starts with high, if we are now precede that Ibala with or ni, then it becomes onibala. Onibala, that is someone who is actually in the business of salvation. And then we have kole, which means uh to pack to pack debt we also have we add i to it which is e it becomes a cole it becomes a packer and then if you now proceed it as well with o with uh o and ni it becomes oni cole that is someone who sells uh who says packer and then we also have bale which means uh which means to sweep and then we had e to it it becomes a bale which means a broom and then if we had O and need to it, uh, O and need to it, it becomes only valid that is someone who sells broom. So that is for that. So let's go ahead and talk about infix and reduplication in the Yoruba language. Infix always works in the environment of reduplication. When talking about reduplication, don't confuse yourself. Reduplication is just the English word, the simple English word that is you duplicate something. For example, reduplication of a commodity would be we have partial reduplication and full reduplication reduplication of commodity will be commodity commodity that is you know we we just duplicate the word but partial reduplication can be commodity common or dt commodity so we we cut some into two and then we join it with the full one that's partial reduplication so infix always work in the environment of reduplication in the Yoruba language. Don't worry, just follow me, you will understand it very well. And then we the word we use as an infix in Yoruba language is always K, 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 the letter K. And then I we first talk about on let, let me take this one after the other, it's letter K. And then we use K to actually signify the bad side of something. We use K to signify the bad side of something that is something that is bad, something that is contrary to the way it's supposed to be. So, for example, we have Oma. Oma in Yoruba is a child. Oma is a child. But if we duplicate Oma, it will be Oma, Oma. But in the middle, if Yoruba now put K, it will now be Oma, Koma. That means a bad child. So, Oma is a child. But when we duplicate it, Oma, Oma, child, child. And then we now put the K in the middle, it becomes Oma comma. K is actually the infix. K is actually used to show the bad side of something, to something that is against itself, something that is bad. And then continue, we have uh, Aya. Aya in Yoruba is a wife. Aya is a wife. Aya is a wife. And then if you put Aya, Aya, and then we put K, which is key in the middle, it becomes Aya Kaya, Aya Kaya, that is as you must have guessed, a bad wife. And then we also have ere. Ere means play. Play. Ere means play. And then if we duplicate it, ere, ere, and then we put key in the middle, it becomes ere kiri, that is a bad play. And then we also have era. Era is an animal, a goat. For example, generally, animal is era in the Yoruba language. Generally, all animal are era. English call it animals. But in Yoruba, all animals are Erna. But of course, there is still a domestic goat that Yoruba still used to call Erna. Goat, Yoruba still call goat Erna. So all animals are Erna. Goat is still Erna in the Yoruba language. So we have Erna. So if you duplicate it, it becomes Erna, Erna. And then if you put the key in between, it becomes Erna, Erna. It becomes Erna, Erna. And then we also have Osan. Osan is orange. If you duplicate it, it's awesome, awesome. And then put key 
in between which is an infix it becomes awesome cousin that is a bad orange so and then coming deep down to another one that's a little bit complicated but not complicated the one i said earlier which is oma aya ere omi era awesome they are nouns nouns but if it's actually a verb if it's a verb there is something that we used to actually do if it's a verb we always precede it with hi and then the infix will now be ki u not just ki alone it will be ki u k and u we please if it's a verb just know that verb is i k u that is hi at the pre uh, at the prefix at the beginning and then k u in the middle so for example we have b b means to carry b then just about our principle i k u hi in the beginning k u in the middle we duplicate it b b so it becomes it be could be it be could be it be could be that means someone who carries something is not supposed to carry someone who carries something bad someone who carries something badly it's just used to in different contexts it can be used to mean different things just that what you are doing the way you are carrying it is not the way to carry it or you've actually carried something wrong for example yoruba uses you know in the yoruba language the religion is actually very very uh very very uh, uh settled deep down in the yoruba culture and then some people actually have an encounter with god and then some carry blessings some carry honor but some people in some aspect they go maybe they defy the god and then they carry a cause so they but ah it be could be a little bit that is, he carried something that's not supposed to carry. He carried something bad. He carried something evil. So the different context we actually give the exact meaning of what you're talking about. And then we also have saw. Saw in Yoruba means speak. Saw means speak. And then we can add e at the beginning because the verb. And then we can have ku to in the middle. Saw. Saw. If we duplicate it, it will be saw saw. But we put in the middle ku and then hi in the beginning. It becomes isoku saw. Isokuso, that means what you are saying, something that is bad. Isokuso, so, you know, maybe a, a child says, it says a, a, a bad word, and then you can say, oh, what type of, what type of bad word are you saying? What type of word is that? If you isokuso, what type of rubbish is that? What type of nonsense are you talking about? So, isokuso means something that is contrary to common sense, something that is like swearing words. That's what it is. And then we also have she. She in Yoruba means to do. Yor she means do. Do. That is what she is. She do. And then if you duplicate it, she she. And then applying our principle, e at the beginning, ku in the middle becomes ishekushe. Ishekushe. And ishekushe means something that is like doing something that is bad. And then ishekushe mostly is used in the form of adultery or fornication and things like that in the Yoruba language. They use it very well for that ishekushe. So ishekushe means something that you are doing something that is bad, something contrary to moral. And then we also have wa, wa, wa. That is to drive. Wa means to drive. Wa. So wa means to drive. But of course, Yoruba in, in English too. If you English, if English said drive, most times it's talking about driving a car. But there are different things you can actually drive. But in the Yoruba language, the Yoruba language actually used to specify. What is it driving? Wa oko. Wa moto. Moto and oko is the same thing. So, because wa means to drive, we have wa wa. We are applying our principle. I at the beginning, ku in the middle means iwakuwa. Iwakuwa. That is bad driving. Bad driving. So, maybe you're on the express road and you meet a Yoruba, a Yoruba speaker and say, wa, iru wakuwa woni I say, what type of bad driving is that? Iru means which? Iwakuwa means bad driving. Woni That is which kind? So what type of bad driving is that? So that is for that. And we also have ka. Ka means to read and then ka ka. And then applying our principle, e at the prefix, ku at the infix, and then it becomes ikakuka. Ikakuka. That is bad reading. Ikakuka. Maybe you give your child to read something and then it's reading it. Ikakuka niye now. That is that's a bad reading now. So ikakuka. And we also have na. Na means to spend. Na means to spend. Na to spend and then no no and then we duplicate it no no and then as uh, applying our principle we have e as the prefix and ku as the infix it becomes inakuna that is bad spending inakuna bad spending so inakuna sometimes used as prodigal son a prodigal like someone who is prodigal someone who is profligate someone who spends anyhow that's for that 
and then uh another aspect where we use the duplication i know i i i explained with i what i explained just now is infix but infix works in the environment of the duplication that's why i have to bring the duplication here but we also have the duplication on its own in the yoruba language and then when we're talking about duplication duplication is always used to turn verb to noun sometimes to turn noun to verbs sometimes and then we have bomber which means to carry a child and then we have bomber bomber which means a kidnapper Bomo, bomo, a kidnapper. We have wole, that is to check a house, and then we have wole, wole. So there are some jobs that is already a vibe already. That those, you know, for example, the one that I explained up there. If you look at them, most of them are none. And then if we had the O N or E L or all the or O L, whichever one is, you know, applying the principle, whichever one is applicable. But if the word is actually a verb and then we duplicate it what you are trying to say there is actually also referring to someone who is actually in the job who is actually doing that job for example Boma means to carry a child then Boma Boma is someone who carries the child and then yoruba used to refer to it as kidnapper you know kidnapper always carries something that is that doesn't belong to carry someone that the kidnapper always carries someone that's just it Boma Boma that's that's what they used to do and then we all we have Wole. Wole means to look in the house to inspect the house it may not necessarily mean to inspect the house, but it means to look into the house. And then we have some government officials in the Yoruba land where they inspect the house, you know, to ensure cleanliness. And then Yoruba say wole wole because wole is a verb, is an action word. And then Yoruba duplicates it as wole wole, and that is their job. Their job is an as an inspector. They call them wole wole. So if a word is a verb and then it is duplicated in the Yoruba language, then there's high tendency that they are referring to someone who does it as a job. That is for that. And then the duplication is also used to signify intensity or ideophones. Ideophones are sounds that gives you perception of what a word means. We're talking about ideophone. For example, you know, in English we have boom. Boom. You know, what is the meaning of boom? It's an ideophone. It just immediately you see yeah, boom. It's actually giving you an insight into what is really happening. So that is what we are what you also used to use. Uh, with duplication for as intensity or ideal form and then we also we have general 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 as i said it as i've said it you may you may maybe guess the meaning general general and general general means something that is big but you know there are different things we also have cavity 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 also means big and we also have bang 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 also means big so bang 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 also means big so erima erima also means big erima herima also means big but let me come back to this description very well for example jana jana means big but sometimes it's used to signify something that unnecessarily big unnecessarily big jana jana unnecessarily big we have cavity cavity big but surprisingly big cavity cavity big but surprisingly big and then we also have bang 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 that is descriptively big that is you have a neutral manner you are just trying to describe it that whole bang 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 it's big is this one is actually descriptive we are trying to describe how big someone is, something is or someone is but you are actually maintaining neutral stance uh on on the situation so you are not judging and you are not uh accept, accepting as well so most time they use it to actually eulogize god bang 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 that is the, <laughs> the big god so we also have a uh, erima herima erima herima means uh unconcerningly big that's you just say something is big but it doesn't concern you and sometimes it, you, it's used to refer to something that is unfitting in a particular place maybe the scene is just big for that place maybe it's just you know it's not beautiful it's not it's just unfittingly big it's just big in that space so that is for that and then we also have compounding in the yoruba language yoruba use compounding to turn uh two word maybe uh in two nouns or two verb whatever it is to make one word as well sometimes compounding we have compounding in english classroom class and room and then it becomes classroom that is a place to receive lecture we have head master it become head master that is the head of the school so you back also have such descriptions as well we have Aaron, as i've said earlier we have Aaron is animal we have oko which is farm and then we have enako 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 and then 
Enoku in Yoruba is a domestic animal. Enoku, Enoku, a domestic animal. We have Oma, which is a child. We have Oba, which is a king. And then we have Omoba, that is the child of a king. We have Ewe, which is leaf. We have Obe, which is soup. And then we have Ewebe, which is a vegetable. So, you no, know, Ewebe, you know, a leaf used in cooking soup. So that is all I have for you in this session on Learn Yoruba Online. I hope you've been able to learn a lot. As I've said earlier, watching this, this video for the first time may not necessarily mean you grasp everything that I've said in this video. And if you have any question, put it on the comment section. I will surely respond to your questions. And if you are looking for maybe a private tutor, I'm available for you. We can schedule online sessions depending on your level of understanding. And then we can develop a private, a tailored curriculum for you where we teach you and things other things like that so this is learn yoruba online and see you in subsequent videos